you know, tell me a little bit about how you got into racing. Well, I was a competitive dancer for a very long time. Um, and my parents grew up in Indianapolis, so they took me to the 500, and I just got there, and I saw all the cars, and I immediately fell in love. And on the 12-hour car ride back to Minnesota, I was like, hey, Dad, I want to be a race car driver. I want to be out there one day. And so I asked him how you got started, and he's like, well, I think you do go-karts. So about a month later, he bought me a go-kart. The next weekend after that, I was racing, and that was pretty much it. <laughs> Here I am now. How, how did you make the steps up to where you are now you know going from going from a go-kart as a kid and you know to now right so um, when I started I was in a very little go-kart and then I moved up to shifter carts which when you think of a go-kart you don't think of very much but these carts go um, on sprint tracks about 85 miles an hour and on longer tracks they go about 110 miles an hour um, so I started at the club level at my local track in Minnesota and then um, I started going regionally and then nationally and a few years back I started testing different race cars. Um, I was in a Porsche Cayman at a few tracks and then um, the open wheel car that I'm in now which I definitely love it a lot more than the Porsches. Even though Porsches are cool, just definitely not, you're not so low to the ground and you feel a lot more close to the car when you're surrounded by the cockpit. So I found that love for sure. And then I found the team that I was with this year and pretty much just evolved from there. And what was the feeling like the first time you got behind, you know, the wheel, whether it was the go-kart or, you know, one of the more advanced, you know, just that, explain that rush. It's just, I think the thing for me, whenever I get in a car, even like, a go-kart or an open wheel car that I'm in now, it's just I feel, it feels right. It feels like that's where I'm supposed to be. Um, going 140 miles an hour and I, it's just everything to me. It just feels right. <laughs> uh, that's quite a jump to go from competitive dance to auto <laughs> racing. What was the reaction of your, your friends and your family when you told them you were going to you know, make that switch? Right. So my dad immediately thought that it would be a lot cooler to have a daughter who's a race car driver. He'd be working on carts, changing tires, changing gears, opposed to um, sequins and tap shoes and everything. So my dad was all for it immediately. Um, I think my mom was too because she's always been really supportive of me. I think she was a little sad that I was leaving dance because she was such a good dance mom. But I think she's definitely evolved into a pretty good race mom. Um, all my friends think it's really cool. Um, most people I meet immediately ask if they can race me or if they can go in my race car, which obviously it's never happening. But they always, they always try to beg me. It does not work. A unique situation for you. You suffer from fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. For those that don't know, what is that and, and what are some of the complications for you? So I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia when I was nine years old, um, which is relatively young um, to be diagnosed with it. Um, it's pretty much pain, widespread pain all over, um, fatigue, you're always tired, um, always feel really weak. So it was definitely something that was difficult to deal with at such a young age when all my friends are having sleepovers and running around and being crazy and I'm having to go home and get to rest and so it was definitely difficult um, I was I had to quit dance which was really difficult for me because that was my whole life since I was three um, but a few months later I found racing and it all kind of it worked it it was meant to be I know it was um, so I was able to instead of hours a day dancing I was there at the track like few weekends a month so I had plenty of time to rest and start feeling better um, and it's something it's definitely especially where I am now it's definitely something that's difficult to deal with and I have to have a lot of rest after the races but it's something that I love racing enough so I'm gonna make it work now being in in constant pain like that uh, is it very day-to-day -day in terms of like the level of pain obviously I'm assuming at this point you probably have a pretty high threshold for pain <laughs> so you know constant pain for you might be a lot more agonizing for you know somebody else but what, you know, does it does it vary day to day, week to week? Yeah, absolutely. Some days are better than others, and there's a lot of things that can be done to make it more tolerable. Um, for instance, I work out all the time, and keeping active is definitely a huge thing that helps. And getting a bunch of sleep is definitely vital for my fibromyalgia. Um, but with if I stay up on my workout routines and making sure to get a bunch of sleep, then it's definitely manageable. 
Now, how, how is it that you're able to, you know, kind of push yourself to stay active? You know, I mean, for me, you know, you have an achy knee and all you want to do is sit <laughs> around all day. But, you know, if, if, if being active helps, how do you kind of drive yourself to do that instead of just lounge around? Yeah, it's very difficult. When you're in pain all the time, you definitely just want to stay in bed and not move. But I know I just have to keep pushing myself. I know that if I sit around, I'm just going to be thinking about the pain. Where if I'm out working out, I'm thinking about other things. If I'm out having fun with friends, it's a lot easier easier to think about other things than just think about how much pain I'm in. And now, you know, racing with with fibromyalgia, constant pain, you know, just driving down the highway, you know, you can feel the, the bumps and shakes, but to be doing that at, you know, 85, 90, 100 miles an hour, what is that like? Um, it's definitely difficult, but one thing that I love the most about racing is I get in the car, start the motor, and the last thing on my mind is my pain because I'm going 140 some miles an hour. I don't have any time to think about how much pain I'm in. I only have time to think about the corner that I'm going through, when I need to brake, when I need to get on the throttle, and when I need to go. So it's one nice thing. I don't really notice the pain until I get out of the car again. Is there ever a moment where, you know, like, let's say you're in the middle of a race where maybe something happens, you, you, you jerk the car a little more than you, that, that you kind of have a moment where you kind of feel the pain and, and you just force yourself to shut it out? Or is, or, or at this point, are you just, you know, so mentally into it that, you know, you just forget about it entirely? From time to time, I do get mental breaks where I'm like, oh, okay, that really hurts. Um, but one of the things about racing is you have to be in the mindset all the time so you have to realize I'm not thinking about what I need to be thinking about and immediately change your mindset to be focused on what you're supposed to be thinking about. Is there any certain like techniques that or you know preparations that you have to do differently to kind of safeguard against you know some extra pain I guess? Uh, most of it is just making sure to get a bunch of sleep and making sure that I stay true to my workout routine to make sure that my body can handle the racing and I don't get tired or anything like that. Um, that's most of the struggle. Um, other than that, just um, with every driver, making sure that you're familiar with the track and you go into it knowing as much as you can about the track. And is there, is, there, is there any different type of safety equipment, maybe a different harness or so to kind of keep you steady a little more so you're not, you know, rattling around the car as much? So um, all the drivers have a Hans device, um, which it goes around the back of your head and your neck, and it actually straps to your helmet. Um, and then you have your um, buckles that go over the top of it, so you can't move around. If you're in a crash, your head won't go forward, and your neck will be really stable. So that pretty much keeps you in place, and with the buckles and everything, you're pretty, you can't really move even if you tried, so. This, this is also kind of a unique situation for you where, um, you know, you can kind of use your position, your platform, your success mm -hmm. to bring awareness to fibromyalgia. How have you gone about trying to do that? So I'm working with the National Fibromyalgia Association as well as the Community Pain Center. Um, even when I was growing up trying to figure out what fibromyalgia was, I would always go to the NFA to try to get support and read articles and learn more about it. Um, so with working with Lynn Mazzano, who is the NFA, um, has been great so far. And then what's been some of the reaction from either, you know, younger people like yourself or even, you know, older people that have been dealing with it, you know, with, with fibromyalgia for a while? Uh, that you've had, you know, since you started your work with them? Um, luckily with them, because before I wasn't able to reach as many people as I would like to, and with the National Fibromyalgia Association, their Facebook page has 200,000 some followers. That's great. It's been something that I've been trying to do since I started this, get a whole bunch of people, like, to be interested and learn more and stuff like that to get more awareness out, so it's great to be able to reach such a bigger audience. And have you had any personal interaction with, you know, maybe somebody that's come out to a track to see you because, you know, like, you know, an, another little kid, another little girl that, that you know, that kind of sees you as, as an inspiration to, you know, stay active and, and chase your dreams? Yeah, so there's always a bunch of, um, all the little girls, no matter what track I'm at, all the girls are like, you race, that's so cool, I want to race too. So it's really cool to see, um, being able to inspire the younger girls, especially since there's not many girls in motorsports. And when I was younger, it's not, not even any anything I would think of doing before I went to the race. Um, so that's definitely great and I've met a lot of people through the Facebook pages and I've actually been able to reach out to some people and inspire them to go start walking more, go start exercising or 
painting or whatever, like inspiring them to go out to do what they love doing before they were diagnosed. So that's something that I love. You live in Indianapolis now, you know, racing at the Brickyard, I'm sure, is, is a <laughs> dream for you. Um, you know, Indy Series, NASCAR, where do you see yourself, you know, if everything goes right, you know, five, ten years down the road? So ever since I went to the Indy 500, that's always been my number one goal. I've always wanted to go to IndyCar. And um, especially living in Indianapolis, I know a lot of Indy car drivers, so that's really cool. Um, I mean, obviously, whatever happens, I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but my plan is to go to IndyCar. And now, you, know, you mentioned females in racing. Obviously, Danica Patrick is the first name that jumps to mind. Uh, you know, obviously, your career path a little different, challenges a little different than what she faced, but have, have you, you know, kind of looked at her career path as, as, as something that you might try and emulate? Absolutely, yeah. She was actually at, she was racing in the Indianapolis 500 when I fell in love with it and I was definitely a huge fan of hers so she's definitely been an inspiration for me to see a woman so powerful get so far in motorsports. Have you ever had a chance to, to meet her, interact with her at all? I have not met her yet, no. <laughs> well, hopefully that'll happen in the near future. Right, right. <laughs>